Wow, another week, another nice guy turned villain. <laughs> well, we've made room for Dan to come through now that Crypto Dog is out of the experiment. We've got Dirty Dan, and I can't wait to unpack this. I'm Jules Rangi Heywear, podcaster, failed reality TV star, and lover of all things trash telly. And I'm Chantelle Schmidt. I do all the pedestrian TV recaps for Married at First Sight. Let's get into it. All right, Dirty Dan, it all makes sense now. Our girl Evelyn, she tried to warn us. But I feel like we should have known with everything Mm. that came out in the press as well. But, you know, Evelyn really took him to town and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Mm -hmm. But before we do, we need to rewind and talk about everything that Dan has done this week. Okay, let's start at the commitment ceremony. So we witnessed... Well, that's when they really started to crumble in my eyes. The cracks were showing, but the foundation became extremely unstable on that couch. See, I didn't see any cracks. I I was really surprised when they went up really, really quiet. Mm. You could tell there was tension. And then he admitted that he's not sexually attracted to this beautiful, stunning, gorgeous woman. And then the irony is that dirty, dirty dog has sex with her. Well, it's pitched as that night by producers, but we're going to assume that night. Yeah, it was that night and she was so excited about mm-hmm. it, right? Obviously, he's a man. I don't, I don't want to, you know, point the finger at men, but, you know, I'm not surprised. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm not surprised that Dan slept with Sandy. She's stunning. I'm not surprised that he said what he said and then continued to sleep with her. I'm not surprised that Dan has done what he's done. I think that what he did in terms of He literally rooted and booted her. Mm. This is so sad that the next day he just disappears for hours. Imagine this. And Sandy has made it so obvious that she sees sex as a really big step forward in a relationship and that she's going to gain extra feelings. And she's made that clear with him. Mm. And I think we see it when she's doing her talking to camera the next morning and she's still giddy and kind of on cloud nine. And she's like, yes, um, we were intimate. Breaks my heart. Fast forward like what, an hour and he's off doing one of his six hour runs. What do we think is happening really in these runs? Is he going to work? Uh, I think that he's off seeing the person that we're hearing about in the press. You're thinking a a horizontal bed session. Well, he's still being active about it, isn't he? True. Okay. I would have just assumed that this goes against their contracts that you kind of have to stay within the hotel premises or something but they have gone so rogue this season Mm. so rogue Mm. right they're always out you know the claire and adam thing happened when they were out at the pub Mm. and then this butt dial which we'll get into later that happened outside of camera time so i'm not surprised i reckon that the producers are like go for your life Mm. make shit happen and then we'll come back and talk about it Mm -hmm. i want to chat about the conversation he was having with his um, girlfriend that came over for dinner and out on the balcony, I found it really uncomfortable as a viewer, kind of him watching saying, she can't go in the ocean. That makes me anxious, you know, because mm. he was like kind of dissing all of her Well, it's anxieties. not her choice, right? Yeah, it's yeah. It's not her choice. Rather than, and she said, I love the ocean. I want to live by the ocean. I just can't go in it yeah. because I will flare up. That's not her choice. That's not her choice. And then him sitting there with his bloody friend that we all know and remember – from the wedding. Yeah. Now we've got a name and I don't I don't know if that's in her favour. But anyway, they're sitting out there with their mimosas and it's like, that is Sunday bottomless brunch. Tell me I'm wrong. I feel like they do that every Sunday at North Bondi. Totally, mm-hmm. totally. It was so funny. I'm like, this, this is the picture of Dan's life right mm-hmm. now. Sitting there with one of his many hot girlfriends, yeah. you know. Well, Dan makes sense now. Doesn't the whole wedding make sense? And we called it. Did we not call it? We said your friends at that age surely are a reflection of you. Totally. And we see throughout that meet and greet with his friend Georgia that he starts making little jabs about how active he is and how misaligned their lifestyles are. And then the next day we really see that Mm -hmm. tenfold 
when he starts swearing at her. By the way, any man above the age of 30 who uses the phrase beast mode is a fucking loser. What Dude, a fucking loser. He's a wanker. <laughs> that was such a wanky thing to say. Yeah. Throughout this whole week, we see him taking really sly jabs and not enough to be like a complete insult, but enough to just keep picking away at her. I think he is insinuating that because she's not in boost mode, yuck, what a loser for saying that, because she's not in beast mode and running around Bondi for seven hours every day, she is unfit and lazy. Mm. And I'm just so sick of this narrative from men where they think that if a woman is not size six, if she's not in active wear every day and doing the Bondi to Bronte, then she's unfit. Mm -hmm. You know, not every healthy doesn't look the same on everyone. Yeah. And I'm so off it. You know, it's the same with, you know, women who might have acne. Oh, they're, you know, not dirty or whatever. And we saw this with, um, you know, the Love Island bullying case with the alleged bullying case with um, Aaron and Courtney. He thought that just because she she was going through um, Roaccutane, is that how you say it? Roaccutane. Yeah. She was going through Roaccutane and basically breaking out and he was like oh you know i prefer girls that are into skincare She's like fuck you men have no idea men oh. have absolutely no idea i was so proud of claire at the dinner party which we will get to everyone for standing up and not even like missing a beat so dan was saying oh he just prefers someone fit and everything and she was like well that's sandy if you had actually taken the time to get to know her you would know that Sandy loves being active. So she loves being fit. It might not be sprinting around Sydney, but in different ways. Yeah, I think the key issue here is that Dan is not listening to anything Sandy's saying because obviously he doesn't know that she's active. Mm. Obviously he didn't listen to her when she said that sex means a lot to her mm. and that that will change her feelings about the relationship. And the downward spiral that she's going in when he disappears the next day mm. Like, it makes me feel so sad that she's sitting there going, was I not good enough? Oh, don't. You know, was my, is something wrong with my body? Mm. Every woman has been there, have they not? Mm-hmm. I think as well, her case especially, she was already low-key, low-key hesitant to sleep with him. And she slept with him oh, and he fucked her me. over. This and we're probably me. projecting that nah. happens a lot. <laughs> oh, my God. Every fucking time you end up sleeping with that person that you don't want to sleep with. Mm-hmm. And then they do this. Then they get the power. There's mm. a great Sex in the City episode mm. where, you know, Samantha tries to have the power and then she loses it. Mm. This is exactly it, right? Well, I think Sandy is kind of realising that as well. And it's like we've been there with girlfriends at Bottomless Brunch and they're telling us about this amazing guy. We see them the next week and they're like, oh, yeah, he's good. Like the light has just gone. Oh, every fucking, <laughs> every fucking time, hey. Like my friends now... I don't even tell them. You don't even know if, like, if I went on a date because I'm like, fuck it, he's not going to be a person next week. He's no, we disappear into the abyss with all my other ex Tinder boyfriends. Once it hits six months, then he can come over to the house. But nah, nothing before then. Yeah. But Sandy's bad luck doesn't stop there. The butt dial. <laughs> Surely. <laughs> I'm I'm a bit in two minds about this bloody butt dial. Rupert. I'm like, this does not happen. Rupert! <laughs> the thing is, Rupert did, you know, forget the rings or drop the rings or whatever on the wedding day. So I'm kind of like, maybe. He does seem a bit mm. neither here nor there sometimes. We just had Ella and Dom on last episode. Go watch it if you haven't. And Dom had this amazing theory. And I reckon she's 100% correct now. Dom was basically saying the producers have fucked Dan over. She was saying this in a roundabout way. The producers have basically fucked Dan over for something that was will be coming up and he's trying to get the upper hand. Do you think there's worse stuff to come from Dan still? Yeah, I do. And I reckon the producers, Vendemore could be editing shit right now. I reckon they could be making him out to be even worse than he is. So this butt dial, tell me, are you hanging up or are you listening in? What do you mean? I'm putting that on loudspeaker. I'm running up to your room. You're like video recording it. We are getting everyone in on this. What's the alternative? I would never hang up. I would be listening very intently. I'd be turning the volume up as well. Like there is no way I'm hanging up. People are having a bit of a debate about whether or not Evelyn should have hung up. I'm like, there is no question. Who are these people? <laughs> what, in loving and trusting relationships? Boring. Get with the rest of us, hun. We've all got trust issues and we're all staying on that line. <laughs> Our girl Evelyn approaches Sandy in the hall 
your gal's going through it. I'm not going to lie. She looks like she's had the life sucked out of her. No, Unfortunately, fuck you, not Sandy physically. always looks good. <laughs> <laughs> Evelyn hit Sandy with all of this info that happened on the butt tile. Dan has gotten his ex-girlfriend's photos up and is showing the boys how hot his exes are compared <laughs> to Sandy. Oh, yuck. It's so annoying that women always have to be compared. Mm, mm-hmm. Like, we don't get it enough from social media. Mm. We don't get it enough from every fucking avenue of our life. Mm-hmm. Now he wants to whip out his ex-girlfriends and show them off. I'm sorry, Dan. The only reason your ex-girlfriends are hot is because you have fucking money. Money, 100%. Oh, yeah. Does he really think that it's his personality winning over these babes? Yeah. I think it might happen to us, but mm. we never find out. And, you know, it might be an internal thing that, mm. you know, people do. But, oh, just it's not it's not the com- – okay, it is the comparing. The comparing sucks. Mm. But it's the way he's showing off these women. That's mm. the, my real issue with yeah. this. He's really parading them. Yeah. You know, we saw the type of friends that he has at the wedding and that type of thing. He just seems like a bit of a show pony. Mm. Like he's running rounds on the Gold Coast, going to bloody... Star Casino. Definitely Star Casino. He has Star Casino written all over <laughs> him. <laughs> yeah. And it's just this, it's just really icky and it's really mm. gross and I, I don't think like when, it. I think once you cross that line, it's really hard. Like I'm just imagining if that happened to me and I found out my partner was doing that behind my back. It wouldn't matter what I achieved or how I changed my looks. I would always be thinking in the back of my head, I was no longer good enough. And don't we always live with this as it is? Mm. You know, I'm always questioning myself about, you know, am I as hot as that girl that he works with? Am I as funny as that girl that he plays soccer with? Mm. Am I, you know, we're just constantly comparing as it is, let alone you've had sex with this man 24 to 48 hours ago. That's the behaviour that he decides to follow through with. It's, ugh. Well, we're going to get to the dinner party, but I want to (laughs) know that something else happened on that butt dial. Hugo, oh, Hugo, Calling Taylor a see you next Tuesday. We shouldn't laugh. No one should ever no. call someone a C word. Mm-mm. It's vile. It's disgusting. Yes. It is not an insult to ever be used. However, let's talk about <laughs> the steps that got Hugo to this point. Yeah. Right. There is a moment at the dinner party when Evelyn, Evelyn, Queen. Queen Evelyn, <laughs> our girl. Yeah. Rock solid, babe. When Evelyn says, go on, Hugo, tell me what you said. At this point, we don't even know that Hugo's contributed to the butt dial. Can I just say, in front of everyone, before people have arrived, I loved it. I loved it. Great entertainment. Evelyn's amazing. I need more. So, yeah, she says, you know, basically, cut the shit, Hugo. Tell your wife what you said about her. I'm (laughs) like, surely not. Surely not to her face. Anyway, then she tells the the group that, um, you know, Old Matt Hugo has called his wife a C word. Mm-hmm. We need to stop laughing. I know. <laughs> and then Taylor says, I'm going to read it actually word for word. <laughs> I know that I'm blunt, but I tell the truth. Yep. <laughs> That's one way to put That's it. Nice way. And I have not said anything bad about you. Lies. Lies. <laughs> I've had your back. Lies. Lies. Even though... This is the best bit. Even though you're probably the most fucking annoying person I've ever met in my life. Oh, my God. Wait, we need to stop laughing. But this girl, I will back her. Oh, fuck. I'm going to get in trouble here. I don't want to back her, but I still find her, like, reality perfection. Yeah. They did amazing with this casting, her as an intruder. Yeah. Because let's talk about the ranking task. I was pissing. I was pissing myself. Her saying, Jesse, um, he can go down because he just gives me serial killer vibes. Literally the same episode that he gets that bloody serial killer mask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't notice that. You're joking. I, I like, mean, I noticed the mask. I yeah. did not put two and two together. I think it was the same episode. Who knows? Yeah. It's all a blur with yeah, this yeah. bloody show. But to me, the funniest part was when <laughs> <laughs> was when he put her second last, but based off trying based off basically her personality i'm like this is savagery again mm-hmm. shouldn't be laughing again entertaining mm-hmm. <laughs> but she just fucking lost it she was just so she, off she was it. put her mask on and was like i'm too sick <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know i get sick when someone insults me too fantastic but anyway so she can't sit here and claim that you know 
she's been the mm. best wife in mm-hmm. all of the universe. No gold stars for Taylor at this point. But no one deserves to be called a C-word. Yeah. And I'm just in hysterics that this is a storyline again, mm. that, the, that the whole C-word thing is a storyline because it was one for Brent and Tamara last season. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I, I actually really like her as a, her character that's mm. been portrayed, but I do need to double down because a few episodes ago I said I understand why Claire cheated. So even though Taylor's becoming one of my favourite characters, I can understand exactly why Hugo said that. Like I can't Yes, be, you're yeah. not you're not justifying it, but you understand yes. it. Yeah. yeah. So back to the dinner party. Then finally the food is served. These people must get hungry. I yeah. swear to God. They'll be freezing. Well, I was on a reality TV show. You're and- joking. <laughs> where? where? <laughs> and for all of uh I assume it would might be different with the dinner party, but let's say like the palmy or if they get any food. Um, in a room it's normally stone cold Gross. did you know that yeah so it's normally freezing they make you wait until they set up all of their cameras mm. um, and you know get into place etc which can sometimes take about 40 minutes and then they'll say like rolling and then you can eat Look, I want to say gross, but I'm not going to pretend that I have standards when it comes to food. Nah, nah. I'm like a 35 second rule type of gal. So yeah, I wonder how the dinner party if they actually let you eat straight away. If they're like hold, hold, hold. Well, I just feel like everyone's always eating asparagus. Anyway, moving mm. on. Moving on. Sorry. <laughs> yes, we got a bit off track there. So everyone's eating. Everyone's basically biting at each other. Then Harrison, because he's got a million opinions. Fuck off, Harrison, please. Fuck off. He jumps in and says, I don't really see the problem with Dan having a tie. Harrison, the heat is off you for one week and you want to get back into it? You fucking dumb. Then Claire jumps in with one of the best one-liners of the season. (laughs) Our girl, our girl. (laughs) She says, it's a boys club. Why don't you all just go and butt fuck each other? What we were all thinking. <laughs> I know that people are a bit off Claire, but hail Queen Claire, hail Queen Evelyn. <laughs> but I loved seeing um, Cam's face when she said that because remember when Alessandra asked them all to talk about sex mm-hmm. and she brought up butt play and Cam was like, that's where I draw the line. So he was really taken aback by Claire's comment. Well, hold that thought. We're going to talk about Cam and Lyndall next. Mm. Just as furious. But let's talk about what Dan revealed towards the end of the dinner party. This is familiar territory, isn't it, with the Josh and Mel stuff. Basically, talking about your sex life to an entire group. I felt really sad for Sandy because she had made it very clear that she has boundaries around sharing Mm -hmm. those intimate details. And you just see her face drop. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about, on a lighter note, the fact that he said their sex was nice. Yuck. Has your sex ever been described as nice? I would sooner die than have my sex be described as nice. What do we think nice sex is? Is that just missionary and getting crazy with a bit of doggy to finish? Is that that nice sex? (laughs) That's crazy sexuals. What porn movies have you been watching? My God. No. I will. Yes. I think nice sex is Stroking of the hair. Yeah, yeah. Bit of vanilla. Maybe yeah. maybe a leg up to the side. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But to me, nice means boring. That's how I describe a date that is so batshit boring. True. So goes, or if when you was it? meet someone, they were nice. They were no nice. No other characteristics. And I know immediately if someone describes a partner as nice, I go, well, good luck because you're going to fall asleep very oh soon and tap out of that relationship. Poor Sandy. So this only adds fuel to the fire because she's already questioning how she performed in the bedroom I imagine Mm. because that's what would happen if your husband goes absent and now he's going around telling everyone their sex was nice Mm. it was a really nice moment she's probably just assuming that the sex was so average that's why he's decided to go on runs for six hours that's what I would be thinking but thinking fuck was I that bad in bed yeah a hundred percent but meanwhile you've got Duncan and Alyssa rooting like rabbits so power to them power to them but I think when it comes to Dan and Sandy I think it's safe to say no more sex for them Mm. and I think we're just going to have to see what happens at this commitment ceremony because I think that John's going hard this commitment ceremony I would really love him to Mm. I I feel like they've been sitting back or they've been targeting things that we're not really seeing as a viewer it's kind of confusing me so I would like yeah the nail to be laid in do we think that they are writing stay I really 
hope that Sandy writes Liv, but I think she's going to write Stay because you, she really likes him. You fucking, you're joking. Do you actually think so? She's been, well. Well, she, like, they can't, she can't do homestays. I reckon they'll write Liv. No, I think she's going to write Stay because I think that she has given herself to this man and that's a big deal for her. True. Okay, your favourite couple, Jules. Boring. Hated them from the start. <laughs> We're talking about Lyndall and Cam. Now, this week for them was a weird one, mainly because of their parents and their parents' uh, <laughs> opinions of one another. Mm. But I wanted to read out a tweet that kind of sums up everything that happened, I feel. So the tweet is from Isabel Ardent. It says, Lyndall's mum apologises for overstepping, acknowledges she doesn't know Cam, so can't make assumptions about his comfort level. Like an emotionally mature adult. Meanwhile... Cam's mum implies Lyndall is insecure for seeking comfort from her partner when feeling down. Amen. That's exactly <laughs> it. Actually, that person wrote it really beautifully. Totally. I think she, I was off her as soon as, um, you know, Lyndall was making polite conversations. She said, how's your time in Sydney being depressing? <laughs> I would have been she, off it. Has she seen the mould in Sydney? Then we can talk. <laughs> then we can talk. My God. And she's acting like he is in some kind of prison cell. He's in the Sky Suites in Sydney. Mm. He's probably got a Harbour Bridge view. Mm. But her poor son needs to roam free with his hair running wild. Like, what is this woman talking about? Mm-hmm. She just spoke straight to the cameraman, etc., saying, I don't know how you've trapped him here for so long or something. Yeah, um, because he signed a contract, honey. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but anyway, I think that everything sort of starts to unfold when she – brings her son outside and she gives him a little speaking to and she says, well, I think that Lyndall needs hugs because she is insecure. Wow. That actually broke my heart to watch because I could actually see that little boy in Cam desperately hanging off his mother's every word. I don't think she realises the power she has over him. I wouldn't be surprised if he's like a ba- the baby of the family or an only child or something because he was just taking everything she said as Bible. Yeah. Hanging off her every word or still literally latched to her teeth. On the teeth. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Yeah, yeah. That is a man child. That is a mama's boy. And I've been waiting for this to come out of Cam because I think it's been really obvious. Yeah. Now, no, I think you're right now upon reflection. And I mean, we saw that in the kitchen in the aftermath. This man child couldn't even say, This is how I feel. This is how this situation makes me feel. My mum, my mum, my mum. I was screaming, you fucking child. <laughs> and he's just such a, like a little dobbers wear nappies vibe. Like, <laughs> he's just like, you know, well, my mum. And he was so excited to tell her. My mum thinks it's because you're insecure. Mm. What do you think of that, Lyndall? Like, grow the fuck up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> First of all, ick that he didn't stand up for Lyndall. Because as you and I both know, Chance, Once you're on the wrong side of the family, especially of the matriarch, of the mother, your relationship can never and will never be the same. Cam's mother is the type of mum who, you know, their sons come home for Christmas and they're so on their backs about, oh, why don't you have a girlfriend? You should have a girlfriend. Yet everyone they bring home is too loud, too... I don't know, too fat. I'm trying to think of what an old school mother might say. Mm. I feel like they they don't realise how much of a part of the problem and the toxic cycle they put into. This is really interesting that you're saying this because I don't think I'd really thought about it until now. But I feel like obviously I've been a single person for quite Mm. a long time, give or take a few uh, people that shouldn't have come into my life. Um, But everyone's always saying the same thing to me, you know, why don't you have a boyfriend, whatever. Then the minute that I do... It's like, well, isn't he a bit young or, you know, but what does he do for work mm. and, you know, all of these things. And I'm like, well, I can't fucking can't win. win. Yeah, mm. but, you know, you're right. When you say that about Cam's mum, it's like it is a cycle mm. and she's just saying go find someone, but they're never going to be good enough, but go find someone again. They're not going to be good enough either. So what does this do to Cam? It makes him further latch on to yeah. mum's the teat, teat. I know. but <laughs> just going into this experiment he obviously looks like a mummy's boy he would have told her everything and I feel like he's the type of person that unless he got mum's confirmation he actually wouldn't have gone on the show okay on to my favorite segment to wrap up the show fuck marry leave shit I haven't thought about this uh, based um, off this week how's this gonna get so boring I'm gonna throw a curveball mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna fuck Rupert 
Yeah, I can see that for you. I just feel like he'd just be happy to be there. <laughs> I can see. You know what? I reckon he's got a rig under those clothes. I just – don't you just feel like he would just be like – Praise be, you know. Yeah, true. Like yeah, he'd be yeah, one yeah. of those guys that would just gas you up and just yeah. make you feel like the hottest woman in the world. And they just don't stop staring. Yeah. They're like like baby, like yeah. little babies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna marry Josh. I don't care if he's not in the experiment anymore. Oh, you fucking love Daddy Josh. That took me a second to think about who. <laughs> we have so many. You love Daddy Josh. This could be a thing. I would just let's just go down to Could You Pav. Okay. All right. Marry Daddy Josh. <laughs> And then I'm going to leave Harrison. He's just given me the the way that he spoke about periods this week. Oh, my gosh. We didn't even talk about that. I know. Wild. I know. I'd just like first maybe look up how to pronounce a word before you yeah, use yeah. it. Uh, second, did he check in with Bronte about whether or not she wanted that information shared? Mm-hmm. Third, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I feel like if we showed him a diagram of like where Harrison, show us where the clit is. He'd be like, uh, uh, like left, left thigh, left thigh. Yeah, He'd totally. have no idea. He wouldn't even know if you could pee with a tampon in. Yeah. yeah. Like Harrison, come on. Come on the show, Harrison. <laughs> <laughs> we'll treat you nicely, we swear. Okay. I'm going to throw a spanner in the works. Oi, oi, oi. I might still, just because he's always out and I love my me time, I might still marry Dan. <laughs> well, because no, he's so rich and he's always out of the I house. I thought you were about to say ripped then. I'm like, do not no, tap into no, beast no, no, mode. No. <laughs> Yuck, beast mode. He's so rich. He's always out of the house. I can live in North Bondi finally. And even if our rent gets increased, he can pay for it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Dan, I'm going to marry. I'm going to fuck Duncan and Ollie in the threesome because I've chosen them separately. So we may as well just all to get together and then leave. Oh, I'm leaving Cam. I don't know why that whole mum thing really triggered me, but I can't stand little wimpy spineless men like that. Okay, interesting. And the Dan marrying thing, I'm like, you know what? Just take him for all his worth and get the fuck out 100%. of there. 100%. We'll Love run it up. We'll have you over every day for mimosas because he can just pay for everything. It's 100%. a perfect life. Yeah. So another scandalous week. When will they end? Never. That is all <laughs> from us this week. This is a pedestrian TV vodcast. You can catch up on all the goss on the We've Done the Maths newsletter via Pedestrian TV. And we'll see you next week. See you next week. 